Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, we are going to check out this Cobra OBD2 scan tool. Um, this is model number KB30. I got this off Amazon. It was one of the least expensive ones. I just wanted to see how well it worked. So um, yeah, and they keep the, you know, it just came just like this in this plastic bag. So they keep the packaging uh, simple, uh, I'm sure to save on cost. So here is what the scan tool looks like. Um, and then we got the owner's manual, the user's manual, and some other information here. And with this, make sure that you read through all of this um, completely and understand it completely before you use the Cobra scan tool. It will tell you everything you need to know on how to use this both safely and properly. So let's talk about uh, OBD really quick. Uh, OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics. Um, all cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the US were required to have this port in the vehicle. So any vehicles that are 1996 or newer, you will most likely have the port on the driver's side underneath the dash. If your car or truck, uh, if your car or light truck was sold outside of the US, it's still possible that you have this in your vehicle. Just take a look around to confirm for sure. And you know, this is what the um, port looks like uh, coming off the scan tool here. Um, and you'll notice, I'll show you the one in my car when we hook this up and test it out. Um, but you'll notice the top is longer than the bottom and the sides are angled. So this can only fit in one way. So just make sure to fit it in the right way. Um, and it's just got a couple, couple of buttons here. One that says enter and one that says scroll. So um, let's go ahead and head out to my 2006 Toyota Corolla. Um, I actually have my check engine light on so we can test this out and see what's going on. And I'll take you through step by step and we'll, we'll see how this thing works. All right, guys, so here is my car, and the port on my car is right down there. Um, and you can see, just like I said, it's you know longer on the top than it is on the bottom, and it has those angled sides, so it can only go in one way. Uh, so just make sure to put it in the right way. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and be right back. All right, guys, so once you have the scan tool plugged in and your car turned to the on position, um, we can hit the enter button here and it's gonna go through uh, scanning the onboard computer. It'll take just a minute or so, so I'll be back when it's done. All right, guys, so here is the menu and we'll just go through um, you know, each thing option by option and we'll talk about it. So the first one here is diagnostic trouble code. So we'll hit the enter button. And you can see that I have one fault and zero pending. Pending are the ones that the onboard computer has not, um, you know, made official yet. Um, but if there was a pending code, it would still tell you. So if we hit enter from here, um, it will show that the code is P0420 and it's code one of one. And this is where you could scroll through the codes if you had multiple. Uh, but I just have the one. So let's refer to the user's manual to see what this code means. All right, guys, and that's the nice thing about the user's manual here is it has all the different codes listed, and you can see right here that P0420 is catalyst efficiency below threshold bank one. Um, you know, and for each trouble code, there could be a handful of different things um, that's triggering that trouble code. So this is where you would go to the internet and you would do the research to hopefully uh, help give you an idea of what might be going on with your vehicle. Um, you know, and if you didn't want to fix it yourself and you decided to bring it into a mechanic, um, this is where you could talk to the mechanic about the code that you're getting back and discuss with them what it might be and what the cost of those uh, repairs uh, you know, might be as well. So in my case, the P0420 most likely uh, is for the oxygen sensors, one of the oxygen sensors on my 2006 Toyota Corolla. And I do have those on my list uh, of things to fix. So let's go ahead and head back to the car and see what else is in the Cobra scan tool. All right, so then when you're done uh, with that, you can hit enter and it'll bring you back to the menu here. And if you hit the scroll button, we can go to the next one. Um, this is where you can erase the code if you uh, want to. We're not gonna erase the code in my car because I haven't fixed it yet. Um, and typically the onboard computers will erase the code after you've made the fix. But um, if you wanted to get in here and erase it anyways, uh, this is how you would do it. 
but let's hit no so we can back out and we'll scroll through to the next one. So uh, this option is I am, the I am readiness screen. And this talks about all the monitors in your uh, car and if they're, uh, you know, whoops, skipped right past it. Okay, um, it talks about all the monitors in your car um, and if they're ready, not ready, or not available. So the first thing we see here is MIL and it shows that it's off. Uh, MIL stands for malfunction indicator lamp, uh, which is the same thing as the check engine light. And mine is off currently and I did verify that. Um, mine goes off and on, um, you know, this code that I have stored in there. Uh, sometimes it will have it on, sometimes it will have it off, but currently it's off. So let's scroll through this. And then we could see that the misfire monitor is ready. You know, here, here are the different monitors that are ready. And then we got to one here that says NA. Um, so for my car, this is not uh, an available monitor. Um, but you can see there's another not available, another. Uh, the rest are ready though. So if you did see one in here that said not ready, um, you know, most likely that could be fixed just by driving your car around. Um, but you would most likely have an issue if you took it to be emissions tested and it said uh, not ready. So um, let's go ahead and hit enter here and that will back us out. And then we'll scroll to the next one, which is VIN. If this is supported in your car, it will tell you the VIN number. And um, the last option here is rescan. So you can rescan your onboard computer um, if you wanted to. And then you're right back to uh, diagnostic trouble code. So um, let's give the Cobra KB30 a final recap and review. All right, guys, so here's what I think about the, the Cobra KB30. It's one of the more simple um, uh, scan tools that I've used, but that's okay because most of the time with scan tools, you're just looking for the, the trouble code to see what it is. And then from there, you can decide if it's something you know you want to research further and try to fix yourself or if you wanted to bring it to a mechanic to have them fix but um you know at least you would go uh, to the mechanic knowing if that's what you chose uh you know what the code was and you could talk with them about what the problem might be and what the cost uh, of those types of problems are to fix you know, each trouble code can have a handful of things that could be, um, you know, giving that trouble code. So, um, you know, if nothing else, at least you have uh, some information about what's going on with your vehicle. This is a nice scan tool for the price. Um, you know, you can fit it into a drawer or into a toolbox and then it's there when you need it. So I hope you guys like this video and thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have the time, check out these other great videos.